This is Anatomical Surrogate Technologies, a company that builds perfect replicas of the human body by hand, one at a time. What drives these modern-day Dr. Frankensteins? Research on the devastating consequences of landmine explosions. But this time, they have a new objective. They will build an artificial president and an artificial governor whose sole purposes are to be shot by a lone rifleman. To build the surrogate torsos correctly, Designers Chris Lee and Wesley Fisk must consider precisely how Kennedy and Connolly were sitting at the moment of the second shot. Zapruder 225. We just, just sit down here, facing in, that, facing in that direction. Okay, now, if you just sort of lean forward just a, just a, just a little bit yeah. and actually have this arm up, yeah. because really the side of the vehicle is actually quite, quite high. high. When you lift your arm up, you're Mm. Upper thorax Changes. just slightly yeah. turns yeah. as you put your arm up. It is essential to find human models with exactly the same physical builds as both President Kennedy and Governor John Connolly. So a neck to waist of 18 inches. Chest circumference, we've got JFK at 39 inches. Sort of a natural sitting position. 39 and a half. Well, that's pretty close. Using these human models, Chris and Wes make plaster castings and stitch them together to form the molds. Fiberglass resin is then poured into the molds to make these block torsos. From these solid forms, Wes creates the outer shells needed to make the human surrogates. Next, Chris enters the measurements into a computer to calculate the size of the interior skeletal structures. Using a silicone mold, he constructs an exact replica of the sternum and then the rib cage around it. Joints are good. Oh, the clearances look and nice. The resins we've used to build the ribs and the intercostal cartilage behave in a very similar fashion to real ribs. In the next part of the process, they line the outer shells with skin. It's a chamois-based product. It's had oils added to it, and it's been hydrated so that it actually will perform like real skin. It's a very tricky material to, to work with, but we are in the process of trying to recreate the, the human body, so uh, it's not an easy thing. Below the skin goes a layer of muscle. We're pouring in a muscle replicant gel here, and it's something that, that actually uh, performs in, in the same way as, as, as muscle would when it sets. Okay. Just a last minute inspection. Looks okay. Now to put a rib cage into the muscle solution and wait for it to set, like a giant jello mold. The torsos will be kept at 39 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 hours before they're ready to take part in our forensic recreation of the Kennedy assassination. The team from Anatomical Surrogate Technologies must place the torsos in exactly the right positions to ensure that Alex's bullet will travel the same path as Lee Harvey Oswald's magic bullet. First, to lock in the position of the Kennedy and Connolly surrogates, they construct a special platform to serve as the presidential limousine. Yep, that's that. The torsos will rest on small tables in place of seats. Torso designer Wesley Fisk makes sure height and spacing adjustments are dialed in with exacting precision. We're just establishing, using, using our mock-up here, the relative, relative angles that are going to be necessary to do the final shot. They also consider the specific contour of Elm Street in Dealey Plaza. Due to the inclination of Elm Street being at three degrees, we've adjusted the base of uh, the vehicle to be at three degrees. Uh, so that we've got that change in addition to the angle of the shot. Since they only have one set of surrogates, Wesley decides to test the bullet trajectory on these early torso castings. So if the shot is off target, they can still make adjustments. You've got to catch the actual lip of the car 
sits about here because he puts his arms slightly up. And the indications are from the photos that we've got for almost the entire time he has his arms sitting up on the edge of the vehicle. I'm just checking the actual records from the autopsy of the president's neck wounds. I just wanted to make sure that we're very close to the 14 centimetres directly in line with the right mastoids. Wesley made sure to include a complete neck on the JFK torso so he could accurately triangulate the position of the entry wound. At the point at the front of his neck there, sternal notch, that we need to have that. If you want to just have a look from the other end. The bullet entered Connolly just below his shoulder blade, breaking the fifth rib. Yeah, so it was just below his, um, you know, okay. just below his armpit. Alex lines up his shot. His margin of error is tiny. To replicate Oswald's shot, he must also hit Connolly's rib. That looks absolutely perfect. But as Alex dangles high above the shooting range, another challenge appears. The wind picks up. OK, that's the wind and the cradle movement. It's not strong enough to affect the bullet path, but our shooter's mechanical perch begins to wobble. When it's nine, 10 meters per second up there and you still have slop in the crane boom, you're virtually timing the resonant pattern of, of the cradle to take the shot. Alex senses the rhythm and waits for just the right moment. Here we go. It's very close. Well, if someone can speak to Alex and tell him he's one inch off to the left-hand side of the target, and the amazing thing is that the Governor Connolly entrance wound is again very close, almost one inch out. Now it is time to bring in the anatomical surrogates. First, the torso representing JFK. Stand up. To prevent any bruising of the fragile model, our team transports it in its rigid mold. Yeah. Since this torso is identical to the black model, it is a simple matter of lining up the same placement and angle. Leave, that on. Leave everything on at this stage. During these final adjustments, cellophane coverings on the models keep the skin supple and moist. Let's get the next one. Next, they unveil Connolly's torso. A little bit at the front here, a little bit at the back. I think now we'll, uh, we'll need to just make sure that this is covered. So we might ask someone to put some more cling wrap and then we'll put the wrist block down and we'll do the, uh, do the lines. The exact placement of Connolly's wrist is not known. In the Zapruder film, his hand is below the body of the car. Since the precise trajectory of the bullet leaving Connolly's torso is going to be hard to predict, Wesley has devised a gel block embedded with four sets of wrist bones. OK, what, what we have here is our surrogate JFK, skin covered with some sinew elements in there, a trachea with a little bit of cartilage on the front of it, just in case that, that actually caused any yaw in the bullet. We've got our Connolly model, uh, which has the full thoracic cage in it, uh, with every vertebrae from T1 to T12, full cage. Then in front of that, we have a, a, a skin-covered uh, block, which contains four sets of forearm bones. We're not sure of where the bullet is actually going to exit Connolly's body, so we want to make sure that we try and hit a forearm bone because that's what actually happened. And then we've got a skin covered block here, which is simulating Governor Connolly's legs where the bullet ended up. And hopefully the bullet will actually enter this block and be embedded in here.